Welcome again, General AK. Thank you so much for talking to us yet again and uh, giving our viewers great insights into uh, what has been happening between India and China for um, almost more than a month now. Can Andaman and Nicobar Islands act as uh, a strong deterrent against any aggression from China? The sea has a different dimension. Uh, to take a call on activating our maritime dimension is a great political strategic decision. Uh, there are laws of the sea which are uh, in existence. There are sea commons which have to be respected. And it's not easy to just, though we can, we normally glibly use this term that we will blockade Malacca Straits. You know, uh, it's when you blockade a port of any country, it is an act of war. Now, when you blockade a strait, you are not only disturbing that country, but you are disturbing a complete ecosystem based on rules and regulations. If you are faced with a very serious conflict, not a face off, I would say a very serious conflict, it's for the government to take a decision that where is China's vulnerability? And if you want to exploit that vulnerability at the sea, especially through Andaman Nicobar and dominate the Malacca Straits, and uh, there are many ways in which you can uh, hurt uh, China on the maritime front, because we are at a total advantage here. Uh, certainly, it will act as a deterrent. Since you have um, served there as a lieutenant governor, who better would be uh, to give us insights into how strategically important Andaman and Nicobar Islands are to us in the present scenario? Let me uh, tell your viewers something about Andaman Nicobar Islands because uh, not many people in our country understand or know Andaman Nicobar Islands except for the tourist portion. And I can narrate a small incident. Uh, you know, when we were conducting the 2014 elections in Andaman, and I was there, uh, the sen Home Ministry decided to send a CRPF company, although we didn't want it. It's a very peaceful place. So a signal comes from the headquarters to the local administration that please, they were coming from Tamil Nadu, please reserve two coaches in a train to Port Blair. So I circled it in red and sent it back that it is not trains, you have to come by ship or air. That is the knowledge. Once somebody was sending a parcel to Andaman through a courier service and they said, sir, port bear likha, but country to likha nahi aapne. Let me say it's a group of seven, um, group of 608 islands, islets and atolls. And this number keeps changing. You know, some emerge, some submerge in the sea and all. They lie majestically 750 kilometers north to south in the Andaman Sea, covering the Bay of Bengal and the Malacca Straits, and about 50 to 75 kilometers in width. You'd be surprised to know that 30% of India's EEZ and 25 to 30% of India's coastline is in Andaman and Nicobara. Why can't we turn it uh, into a Singapore? Why can't we turn it into a Hong Kong? We must realize that this group of islands is strategically too important for India. They lie 1,200 kilometers away from our land and just 100 to 150 kilometers from the Southeast Asian coastline, dominating the Straits of Malacca. I'm glad that you mentioned uh, Malacca Straits up front and uh, Malacca Straits has been in the news uh, for, um, for the reasons that uh, India may have leverage over China. The term Indo-Pacific is in vogue these days and Malacca Strait connects the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Ocean through which flows almost 60% of the world's trade. 80% of China's oil, same for Japan, Southeast Asian countries. So all that China imports, mainly oil and other goods, comes through the Malacca Straits. And all that it exports, the great manufacturing hub that China is, all that it manufactures goes out by ship through the Malacca Straits. The Overland Belt and Road Initiative is still in a very nascent stage and be a long time before 
they come good there but malacca straits almost has almost 800 to 1000 ships passing to and fro every day and the andaman nicobar islands in specific the great nicobar island sits on top of that um, it's just um, i think a few uh, 60 or 70 kilometers from malacca straits and you can see the ships passing through the 10 degree channel uh, towards the malacca straits so india has a great geographical leverage on the malacca straits and the sea lanes of communication so andaman and nicobar island also happens to be the site for india's tri service command and uh, with the inauguration as it were of the of the cds the office of the cds currently occupied by general bipin rawat how important do you think the tri services command uh, has become uh, it is india's first operational tri service command though we also have a strategic uh, command it was envisaged that andaman nicobar islands have a separate operational role though there were two views about it one view was that uh, andaman nicobar islands can act as your eyes and ears in the forward area reconnaissance surveillance and then you have the mainland forces who can take on any threat or challenge but uh, with such a large number of islands there was a need felt to look both at the defensive aspect and a offensive cut let me state up front that there is no real defensive threat to these islands the maritime boundary which andaman nicobar shares with five countries in southeast asia is delineated there is no dispute actually the way we looked at it was to see it as a net security provider in this part of the world in collaboration with other friendly countries and towards that end the andaman nicobar command had a short term growth plan and a long term plan i'm um, let's say the short term plan uh, was met to some extent but the long term growth plan is still a in the process the air force and navy take a view that we can't position our assets there we'll create infrastructure and as and when it is required there are adequate forces to move there but uh, that's debatable in today's context even a move by air takes 2 hours and therefore i think the first requirement is to beef up our surveillance and reconnaissance effort uh, beyond what is there today this brings me to the quadrilateral alliance also known as the quad uh, so there have also been murmurs about why uh, andaman and nicobar should be the site of the quad headquarters now do you think that uh, it makes sense to make andaman and nicobar uh, into the headquarter for this alliance while we should certainly uh, maximize the potential of the quad um starting from trade and commerce to peace time uh, threats and challenges but i think a strategic uh, framework for the quad would be beneficial for all the four countries since all the four countries uh, are democratic and think alike but how far we are ready to go is open to question we have come into some agreements uh with for example recently with united states and australia where logistic um, where with all can be availed in each other's bases so i think that is what we are uh, looking at rather than basing a headquarter of a quad because that is i think further into the future to sum up i would say that the andaman nicobar islands are no longer a fortress earlier in the initial years after independence we used to talk of them like a fortress always worried that somebody will come and sit here today india is too big and too powerful and these group of islands uh, should be looked at as a springboard not only for peace time trade and commerce uh, as per our act east policy but i think uh, the point that you made that they are a great potential leverage that we have if we get into a serious conflict situation and india decides to optimize uh, this potential right Pleasure thank you so much
Thank you so much, General Ake. So yes, India does have leverage when it comes to maritime um, conflict. And India is ready and willing to activate Andaman and Nicobar uh, Island's strategic potential should there be a need in the face of a serious conflict, not just the face of 